AI was front and center at Apple's Glowtime event. First iPhones designed from the ground up for Apple intelligence and its breakthrough capabilities. Okay, yeah, surprise, surprise. We're getting an iPhone 16, but visual intelligence might be coming for our AIs. That's right, we're gonna run down the three most important Apple intelligence bits from today's conference. And we're gonna share how Apple intelligence is trying to worm its way into your wrist and potentially even your ear holes. Kevin, it's time to get to the video. So Gavin, Apple announced the next generation of iPhones, surprising nobody. The numbers got larger, they increased all the things, they added a dedicated camera and intelligence button. They reinforced yeah. A lot of what we already knew regarding Apple intelligence, which we will cover, but one notable exception, the biggest announcement is visual intelligence. That's right, Kevin. We've seen a lot of people try this in different ways and different things. And Meta is obviously trying to do this with their Ray-Ban glasses, but this is a specific dedicated functionality to allow you to use AI to interact with things in the real world. So you'll be able to use this dedicated camera button, push it and take a picture of something in the world that will give you information back about it. One of the big use cases they showed off was a guy just kind of walking by a restaurant, went up to the restaurant, thought, hmm, kind of yummy. I think this could be good. Took a picture. We it. don't know if he thought mm, could be kind of yummy. I want to be very <laughs> clear about this. As a journalist, <laughs> Gavin, we don't know the intentions behind that visual search, but he did point the phone at the restaurant and get the Apple Maps information card. That's right. It understands what restaurant he's at. It allows him to know what hours are coming up. They also showed somebody else who was working on their homework in some sort of beautiful historical site where they could use a chat GPT with the, uh, the yeah. action button with the camera. So it does seem like this is a thing that is going to be baked directly into these. Gavin, new I love you, but you are slipping all over the place. Dog breed detection? <laughs> you're right. I'm first, sorry. That is number first one. You're dare that to should have led this video. What that someone was thinking the with their tum tum, video. and then you left out yes. dog breed detection. So yeah, some fairly pedestrian use cases of like like anybody that is screaming at our YouTube video right now, saying, "Hey, this feels like Google Lens or something you could do with the Chat GPT app alone." You're not wrong. You're in fact that would make you right. But <laughs> there's a dedicated button for it, and that means they think it's important. And we'll talk about this in a little bit, but part of this is that Apple is everywhere and it's ever in everything. But Kevin, number two big thing that they announced was new chips, Kevin. We are talking chips that are not going to stop. We have a new A18 chip and an A18 Pro chip, both of which are promising significant upgrades from former Apple iPhones. And we kind of knew this was coming. It's the spec race that always goes on. But Kevin, one thing when I heard this new chip information, I was like, God, this is, it does feel like we're now getting our most powerful computer is instead of the thing that's sitting in front of me right now, it's really my phone in my pocket all the time. And for AI, that feels like a pretty big deal. Yeah, but if I may, it seems odd that like they're already touting the performance increases you'll get with this new chip, considering 99.9% .9 of iPhone users haven't even touched Apple intelligence yet. So it, it, even for me, someone who's excited about this, who wants to upgrade to experiment with these features, I don't understand what 20% faster even yes. means. Right. I, okay. uh, there were some reports of battery drain because people were using their iPhone 15 and beta software. And Kevin, there's a bigger battery. Yes. There's a bigger battery now. They've solved that problem sure. already. You don't have to worry right. about I it. I haven't even had a chance to experience the problem yet. So I guess thank you, Apple. But it's also odd that with some of these features, Gavin, it would say it's a mix of onboard compute and cloud. Well, if yes. it has to go to the cloud, then, then the processor in my device is suddenly kind of rendered a little less important. Well, I think it's going to be a big thing that we see how much of this is on cloud versus how much of it is on device. Right. I think they want to try to keep a lot of it on device. And specifically, the number three thing that we want to talk about here is some really interesting upgrades to Siri. And one of the big things I think that's really worth talking about is its on-screen awareness function. Now, Kevin, as you just mentioned, with the visual intelligence, we have seen these things in other things before. But this is a very cool thing for everybody who's got their phones in their pockets and might want to be working on their phone or see something. Siri is going to now be able to see your phone screen and interact with that. Yeah, like if your favorite dude bro lifting partners suggests a <laughs> new track to pump you up, Gav, well, you can go for that personal record by just saying, Siri, <laughs> play the song. You don't have to say, play the song that Gavin sent me that's in the thing or whatever. It just knows to go right to the Crazy Frog ringtone song. Of course. And who wouldn't want to hear Crazy Frog ringtones like three or four times a day? But Kevin, also one of the cool things that they did, and again, 
I've seen this in somewhere else, but because it's Apple, it's interesting, is what they call stumble protection, which is not a way to get your grandmother safe on a regular basis. It is actually the ability to kind of mix up what you're saying, and then it will contextually understand yeah. what it is you're getting at. You can flub while yelling at yes. Siri, which is nice because she flubs so many times when <laughs> responding. So that's nice that you can be a human with your computer interaction. I also love the deep context awareness of something that they demoed, which was just like, send photos to somebody from last weekend's barbecue. Yeah. Like, that's a fairly intricate request for it to go. Okay, what was last weekend? Let me pull the photos that were only of the barbecue, I hope. Let me find the person, grab all those photos and ship them off. That's a nice Siri interaction to have that feels like a smart agent in your pocket. I want to play a little devil's advocate here only because these are the things that we love and it would be amazing to work. <laughs> and I spend a time working with AI like all the time. Hallucinations do happen, Kevin, at least for now, until yeah. Sam Altman brings out his strawberry world. And the idea of like, go find me that barbecue thing is an amazing thing to see work. And none of this is being done in real time right now. We are seeing videos that are being pre-edited. And if I say, hey, show me that barbecue, and it brings up a barbecue restaurant I went to rather than a barbecue that I was at with a friend of mine, there's that level of like kind of frustration that might kind of start to engage that we've both talked about where you want something to happen and then it doesn't happen and you're like, eh, I don't want to deal with this action. Yeah, we don't have visibility through all the smoke and the mirrors, nor will we have it tomorrow, Gavin, because although no. these iPhones are slated to launch next week, some of the AI features aren't scheduled until end of the year. And some, some features... of them though are coming out. Some of them are coming out soon. Great, Kevin. let's run down soon. which one specifically, Gavin. What <laughs> will we have access to when we spend a thousand plus dollars for the new iPhone 16 Pro. There was a rumor from Business Week that the Genmoji feature is not going to come out until 2025, which I know I'll be disappointed about because then I won't be able to send you Crazy Frog. Cowboy Frogs? Yeah. You want <laughs> Cowboy <laughs> Frogs? Yeah, Cowboy Frogs. Got, they were literal Cowboy Frogs. Kevin, there were two other small things you wanted to get into, which is watch updates and AirPods updates. What, what do we got there? Well, because now AI is the thing, Gavin. It used to just be how much RAM or how fast is the processor, but now it has to be how intelligent is your device? Apple's watch is getting machine learning functionality like better workout detection or fall detection. And then if you have an AirPod, Gavin, nod detection. Ooh, nod detection. <laughs> does that sound like a cool feature, Gavin? Yes, it does, Kevin. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Does it have oh, a wishy-washy support in case you're doing <laughs> yeah, this? I what do I get? Do I get money from them if I hurt my neck doing nod detection? That's yeah. what I want to know. Yeah. Listen, this is all cool. I think it's a really interesting thing just to kind of like to put this into context. All of this stuff we have seen in some form in different products and different things. The thing that I think that's most important here is this is bringing AI to your family, to your parents, to people that are in your life who have an iPhone sitting there. Now, they may not get the newest iPhone, so it might not be right away, but they will get this eventually. And it's going to make it much more worldwide. People are going to start using this in an interesting way. I mean, I think people will start being like, oh, that's kind of interesting. Oh, I can do that. Or like I mentioned before, it may make a lot of people frustrated and it might be a giant failure for all we know. Like this is where we're at in this stage. We're at the very unknown scenario, but because so many people are going to be getting their hands on it, it feels like we're entering to that exploratory understanding point of AI. Last thing for any of you out there who care to engage by leaving a YouTube comment or chatting with us on the old Discord, a question that Gavin and I have been ping-ponging back and forth. Do you think Apple is going to pay gate visual search as an iPhone 16 only feature. Knowing that the iPhone 15 has access to Apple intelligence, you could probably just snap a photo, send it off to the cloud. Do you think eventually iPhone 15 users are gonna get that? Or are they gonna keep it for the 16 upgrade? People out there who are talking right now about this as a super cycle for iPhone buys, meaning that they expect a lot of people to upgrade for these features. So I don't think there's any way you're gonna see the 15 or lower get these features in. But overall, I think Apple's counting on this being a big moneymaker for them. As someone who is sitting patiently with their iPhone 14 Pro, I'm still on the fence about upgrading. We'll see how much they'll give me for a trade-in though, because I do wanna play with these new features. but. Let us know what you think of the new Apple announcements and make sure to like, subscribe, follow, engage, and join us over on that AI for Humans Discord. Until next time, we will see you.